name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my fault, through my fault, through my most. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, for he does not delight in the death of the living. For he created all things so that they may exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them. And the dominion of Hades is not on earth. For righteousness is immortal, for God created man for incorruption and made him in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. She was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. 
Jesus allowed no one to follow him. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then Jesus put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about, for she was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, I wonder how many more miracles, how many more healings, graces in God's provision would there be if only we had more faith? Now, most of us have faith. Yes, we believe in God, we pray to God, we come to church, and that's all good. But do we have a miracle faith, a strong faith? that can draw down God's grace and power from heaven, like that of the apostles and the early Christians and the saints. Now, throughout the Gospels, Jesus was most pleased when he witnessed people's strong faith. Unwavering faith obligated him to act. And if we want God to do something, we should believe. Believe big. Ask big and expect big. It compliments God if we go to him thinking that he is all-powerful, a loving and gracious God, and that he can do anything. Well, we may well think miracles happened, you know, more in the early days of the church. That was then, and this is now. And some Christians today even downplay Jesus' miracles. For example, there was a religion teacher who claimed that when Jesus fed the many thousands with the miracle of the loaves of bread and the few fish, that it was actually Jesus' teachings about loving your neighbor that inspired the people there to share their food with one another. There have been many attempts and even articles written to try to discredit Jesus' miracles. And one might ask, have we lost the sense of the divine? Does everything have to be explained in the natural when we know that God's ways are supernatural? St. Paul, Paul tells us in 2 Timothy that in the last days, people will be lovers of money, abusers, ungrateful, disobedient to parents, etc. And they'll have a form of religion, but deny the power thereof. To deny that miracles actually did happen and continue to happen is denying the power thereof. But the Bible hasn't changed. It says very clearly that all things are possible with God. There are no limitations, and we can never put God in a box. For that matter, how many Catholics no longer believe in the miracle of the Eucharist? This miracle occurs at every Mass. At the Last Supper, Jesus said that the bread was his flesh and the wine was his blood, even if the appearance had not changed. Now, how can anyone question it or try to explain denying him the respect and the reverence? Jesus is not a liar. And if we did believe in the real presence, we'd be going to confession and to mass more frequently. 
and receiving Jesus in the Eucharist with deep reverence. God is a mystery, and thank God. Thank God we can't explain everything that he does or else he would cease being God. His ways are much higher than our ways. Human pride attempts to rationalize so many things with very limited knowledge and understanding, all with the intent to create the illusion that man can control his own destiny and therefore does not need God or his miracles. Now, time and again, throughout history, pagan kingdoms and secular governments thought to be invincible eventually fell apart and were destroyed. But God, his truth, and his bride, the church, will continue on forever. Now, 12 years was a long time for the woman in the gospel to be hemorrhaging. Jesus told her, daughter, your faith has made you well. She spent all that she had on doctors. In those days, a woman who was bleeding was considered unclean. They would often be treated as outcasts. She not only had her physical condition to deal with, but most likely also suffered emotionally with rejection and loneliness. But here's the thing. She could have given up years before, but she continued to persevere. This woman definitely had stamina, and I'm sure Jesus appreciated that in her. She probably heard of how the sick had been healed by just touching Jesus' clothing or being near him. This inspired her faith, and being determined, she pushed her way through the crowd probably getting elbowed or yelled at, but she was on a mission and nothing distracted her from getting to Jesus. He was the answer. Jesus was her hope. Jesus was her healer and Jesus was her future. Now we're all called to persevere, but often we give up without really trying. Many accept mediocrity, thinking that this is probably the best it's ever going to be. How often have we given up on dreams or the fight to change laws and mindsets in our culture that are not truthful or just plain evil? Complacency can lead to complicity. So by giving up or doing nothing, God is denied the opportunity to be himself and to do the impossible. Mother Angelica used to say, we should be ready to do the ridiculous so God can do the miraculous. Now there's a reason why God doesn't always make it easy for us. He wants us to develop a backbone to persevere in the midst of trial. This is where faith kicks in. When we keep going, keep trying, keep fighting, in the midst of setbacks and challenges, Jesus is glorified. In her diary, St. Maria Faustina pointed out to, to Jesus that one of her spiritual director priests who was helping her to promote the devotion to the divine mercy had suffered immensely because of his involvement. But Jesus told St. Faustina that this priest will have a jewel on his crown for every person saved because of the hardship he was enduring. And then get this, that God does not reward based on results, but more so on the purity of the suffering. Interesting. Someone once said, God loves drama. Without some sort of struggle, there can be no victory. And we were born to be overcomers and to be victorious in Christ Jesus. Now, many of us know what desperation and anxiety feels like. 
is when we think everything depends on us, we have to fix things. We have to make it happen. But when we get down to the end of our rope, like the woman in the gospel, after we've tried everything possible that the world has to offer, be it doctors or lawyers or politicians, sooner or later we come to the point of realizing that there's only one way to go, and that is to Jesus. If this has already happened to you, consider yourself blessed. How many times could we have saved ourselves so much aggravation and hardship if we'd only gone to Jesus first in prayer? Now, one of my favorite go-to quotes when things get difficult is from St. Teresa of Avila, who once said, Let nothing frighten you. All things pass away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. So in the spirit of humility and with childlike faith, we know that we need God in a big way. The miracle working Jesus in the Gospels is still the same Jesus today. And so with miracle faith, with faith like that of a little mustard seed, all things become possible. And like Jesus said to Jairus, the father of the girl, little girl who was healed, do not fear, just believe. And like the woman in the gospel who patiently endured suffering for 12 years, whether we experience a healing miracle or not, our life only truly begins and ends with Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, 
having heard the words of everlasting life, let us bring our needs to God in this common prayer. In honor of Canada Day, please remain standing at the end of the petitions for the singing of our national anthem. That Almighty God will bless the Church's ministers with joy in their service of the Gospel and give them continued strength to serve God's holy people, we pray to the Lord. That, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, Almighty God will continue to guide all people through any hardships or sorrow to eternal life, we pray to the Lord. That all people of Canada, as we celebrate Canada Day, may work together to build a society that promotes peace and justice for all, we pray to the Lord. That all victims of hatred and violence may know the love of God and that the troubles currently plaguing our society may be resolved with respect and mutual understanding, we pray to the Lord. That God will establish true and lasting peace in our world and that he will comfort those affected by warfare or oppression, especially in Ukraine, Africa, and the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. That Christ may give comfort and healing to all those who are suffering, especially any sick members of our parish community, we pray to the Lord. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially any deceased members of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Let us bring these petitions and those which remain in our hearts to the throne of Almighty God, through the intercession of our Blessed Lady, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour. Offertory hymn is number 578. I come with joy, 578.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Thank Lord you. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Our hymn during communion is found in your celebrating songbook, number 6.22, Loving and Forgiving, 6.22.
let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements today. First of all, it's a great pleasure to welcome Deacon Moises Caballero to uh, the Basilica of Our Lady. Deacon Moises comes to us from Barranquilla in Colombia. He was ordained a deacon two weeks ago for our diocese, and uh, Bishop Crosby has assigned him here to the Basilica at least for the coming year in his preparation for ordination to the priesthood. Deacon Moises, welcome to the Basilica. So please do uh, take the time over the next week or so to introduce yourself to him over the summer. And uh, any Spanish speakers, you have to speak to him in English. Just kidding, whatever language you want. Um, next Saturday, uh, July 6th, will be the next Diocesan Marian Day. His Excellency Bishop Lobsinger will be the presider and preacher. The day will begin next Saturday morning at 9 o'clock with a holy hour and confessions, benediction at 10.15, mass at 10.30, and rosary procession following the mass. After the procession, coffee, tea, and the gift shop are available. All are very welcome. Also next Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, His Eminence Cardinal Collins will be here at the Basilica to celebrate a Mass of Thanksgiving for the solemn profession of Sister Claudia Marie. Sister Claudia Marie, one of our parishioners, is a, uh, now a fully professed member of the Congregation of the Sisters of Life. And uh, so she'll be giving Thanksgiving here in her home parish. A uh, rather unique opportunity. You are all very welcome, one o'clock next Saturday afternoon. Please note that there will be no Latin Mass during the month of July. His Excellency Bishop Crosby has called Deacon Luis Inacio Cordero to be the ordained to the sacred order of the priesthood. If any of you know of any just cause why Deacon Luis may not be lawfully ordained to the priesthood, please make it known either to me or to His Excellency the Bishop as soon as possible. Reminder that through the summer months of July and August, all weekday Masses, Monday through Friday, will be celebrated at 9 o'clock in the morning. Sadly, in an effort to provide rather greater security here at the Basilica after a couple of unfortunate incidents, uh, through the week, only the South Tower door will be open other than at Mass time. So weekday Masses, you'll be able to get in any door. If you want to visit during the week, you must use the South Tower door. It's the one in the back corner over your left shoulders. Uh, through the little arch there. It will be open from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock most days, except tomorrow when I hope Basilica closes after Mass because no one will be around. Also in that regard, the parish office will be closed tomorrow in honor of Canada Day. The gift shop will be open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Celi Shrine burn for the intentions of Nicola and Amalia di Loreto and family, and Joseph and Nelly Cosarin and family. And on behalf of the entire parish team, I would like to wish all of you a very happy Canada Day. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God.